All right, so let's see if Prof, what Prof Noakes has to say. Uh, the latest installment of Just the ongoing the ongoing op soap opera of Prof Tim Noakes. <laughs> hey, Prof, how's it going? Very well, thanks. How are you guys? Ah, oh, good, good, good. Thank you. See you. Good, good, good. You've moved. You've moved your office around, or you've moved out of your office. You know, I, I was just with my wife, and we were about to do it in the sitting room, but she said, "No, better do it in this office. This is my other office." So, uh, you're talking about the Skype call, I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Okay, so there we go. Well, there's some some more of your. Uh, more of your books and your research then. I was saying a little earlier on, you know, because uh, look, you have, you, have, uh, you have your disciples here in, in the studio. Although I think Simon's not here today. I think yeah, he's taking no. a banting break for two days. So he's probably carving up a, a storm right now. <laughs> um, but uh, you, have, you have your disciples here. So subsequent to our last chat, uh, Prof. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, let's come out. Prof Tim Noakes is killing the country and <laughs> he's, uh, he's killing his people. Jeez, uh, some of these things are crazy. And then um, New York Times, well, that, that comes from some of your fellow academics, first of all, right? People that oh, you yeah, work with. Uh, more than just that, it was the head of the whole faculty of medical sciences at UCT. So, so it's quite a statement. Uh, I mean, it's never happened before that, that a scientist was criticized in this way publicly. Yeah. So it was quite a giant step for the University of Cape Town Medical School. But let's uh, see what, what comes of it all. Do they do they actually come to you and phone you and talk to you direct, or are they doing all of this via media <laughs> platforms? Well, uh, in truth, I was actually on the car train uh, a few weeks ago, and I got an urgent phone call from the dean, and he asked me two questions, and I answered them both, and neither neither of them were actually related to the nature of his of his letter to the Cape Times. And then all of a sudden, I was sent a copy of the letter. So there was no discussion. It was just mm. a fait accompli. Yeah. And so that was kind of unusual way to go about things. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be a good time now, Prof, to uh, to have? A, I think this would be a really entertaining evening. Have a debate, a banting debate with Prof Tim Noakes, and uh, and 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 some of these uh, like these UCT academics, the dean, and a few of the other people, yeah. the doctor that well, we spoke to, dietitians. Yeah, you know, we we had one two years ago, but it was so biased against me that it was too terrible. It became very <laughs> apparent that it wasn't really a debate; it was just to show me up as as a crank, or that was the impression I got. And in fact, I managed to draw with the guy who came in, and he, they flew him in from America. He was a one of the top epidemiologists there. And I managed to show that his science proved that, that if you eat the low, low fat diet you, and you had heart disease, you did worse than if you ate the high carbohydrate, than if you, sorry, the, if you ate the high fat diet. So his own data disproved his hypothesis, but they managed to kind of bury that in the discussion and we didn't come up. But it was the most arrogant or audience I'd ever had in my life. And they were very antagonistic. So that one didn't work. And in fact, I have debated three times with people. I've debated the head of cardiology at Harvard University, right. which you don't get much higher than that. Yeah. And they, he wasn't able to, to dissuade me from my position. So I'm very happy to debate people, but the, 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 the views are so polarized that it's, it's very difficult to get a decent debate going. I think it would be awesome. You know what? You, you, you have these, you have like the, prof or the, the banting debate breakfasts. <laughs> yes, and, and yes. you have the prof there and, and, and uh, a couple of people from the other side and you have the debate and you only serve breakfast based on who wins the debate so if you win the debate prof then it's only eggs and bacon nice streaky bacon with all the fat you can have the tomatoes there Salmon. but no no hash browns none of the none of the, the no bread nothing and if you lose the debate, then it's basically pastries and all that stuff and no eggs. And if I had to eat those, I'd probably die the next hour, an hour later. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's the price you pay for losing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, all right. Now, tell us apparently the New York Times have picked up on this. Uh, it doesn't get much bigger than that either. And uh, big headlines uh, basically backing your theories. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lovely study from Tulane University where they took about 180 people, they split them into two groups, and the one went with the low-carb diet, and the other went with the low-fat diet. And they studied them for a year, and uh, the clear result winner was the low 
fat diet was sorry the low carb diet mm. so i've been talking all day so i'm a bit <laughs> confused so the low carb diet won and what's more important not only was it for weight loss but it was for cardiovascular risk they they lumped everything together as a score for cardiovascular risk according to the guidelines that the cardiologist in Johannesburg and everywhere in South Africa would use. So in other words, if they wanted to judge how sick you were or your risk of heart attack, they'd measure this on your heart attack risk score. The guys used it, and guess what? On the high carbohydrate diet, the healthy diet, nothing changed. On the high fat diet, your cardiovascular risk fell substantially. Wow. So everything we've been saying, for the last four years was proven by the study. But more importantly, this is the 24th such study to show this exactly, exactly the same finding. Hmm. For example, when I had the debate with the professor in 2012, I showed the last great study by a chap called Jeff Olick. And I indicated, and all the findings were exactly the same. They've been replicated in this study. And so the University of Cape Town Medical School has known for two years that the data are out there. And it's just only been confirmed now. And I think the reason is the media is finally getting behind the fact that a low carbohydrate diet may be extremely healthy for you. Yeah. Well, listen, for that to, uh, to hit the New York Times, because that basically goes all over the USA, is, is massive. Because uh, I think they're in more of a sort of a, a progressed state as far as desperation about their obesity issues and, and things yeah. like that. Um, and, and, and I mean, my dad's lived there for over 30 years. Uh, so, and I've been there numerous times and I mean, I've gone there one time and they, 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 they basically extolling the virtues of margarine and I go back the next time and they're telling you margarine will kill you. You must go back to butter and the next time butter's bad and margarine's good. So the Americans don't quite seem to know what is that, but they all seem to be like lemmings. They'll follow whichever, uh, you know, thing is, yeah. is, is being said, this is good for you. They'll go that way. So. Yeah, and the, the commercial pressures in the U.S. are much bigger yeah. than they here. Yeah, they're much more organized, and uh, government is much more controlled by industry so that there's less chance of change. Mm. I think in this country, there is some independent thinking, and, and really what's happened in South Africa in the last year or so is that, that people are asking questions, and that's all we ask. Mm. We're just saying, you know, you've been told that this is the way to eat and for 40 years, and look what's happened. Open your eyes and question whether it was the good advice or not. Yeah. And if you think it wasn't good advice and maybe you're feeling sick, why don't you try to change? And, and we give you the evidence. And the, the science is really clear when you look at all the evidence. It's, uh, unfortunate, it all supports the low-carbohydrate eating plans. Yeah. Well, look, people are embracing it. I went uh, a couple of places I've seen where they now actually have a sign-up. They're going have a banting menu or banting option. Kauai was the one you mentioned last time, and I popped in at the yeah. one here in four ways. And it's very clever what they do. They don't have specific items that are only for banting. They have their normal items, but they say there's a banting option where they'll remove X, Y, and Z from the, the normal dish, and that becomes the banting option. And I think it's really cool. So you can actually yeah. say, I'll take that, the banting option, and then they don't. And the other interesting one, they have a collie rice, cauliflower <laughs> rice. Right. Is that yeah. a carb or is that, is that, is that good? No, cauliflower is very good. It's low carbohydrate and okay. it's, it's really highly nutritious. It's a great vegetable. So it's a great way to get in your vegetables without and your nutrients without carbohydrates. And of course, Cape Town is having the first banting restaurant yeah, in the world. Named yeah, you banting restaurant. So they beat us to it, uh, Prof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got I hope you're getting royalties. And, and let me just say that in February next year, we're organizing the world's first international conference on low carbohydrate diets. Okay. And it's astonishing every day, literally, the world authorities just want to come and talk. Mm. And it's just exciting. So there's going to be such a, it's going to be a groundswell that's really going to break open in January, February next year when people realize all these great scientists and, and writers are all doing it. Fantastic. Well, thanks for the latest update. I'm sure we uh, it'll take another turn somewhere in the next couple of weeks. Someone else is going to come out of the woodwork and uh, have their theories. But uh, yeah, it's always good to chat to you, Prof. Yes, Johnny? Darren, I just wanted to know, I normally have nuts for lunch, and I just wanted to ask Prof if that's all right. Well, which nuts are they, John? That's uh, the key. It's the Woolies ones, but it's the, it's the, the mixed, mixed ones I know. I know the almonds are the ones you possibly advocate, Prof. Yeah, well, that's right. Or the macadamia. Yeah, Prof, eat too many of the cashews, and you eat okay. all the others, you'll be fine. Thank don't, you, Prof. Don't eat cashews. Yeah, the cashews are high carbs. They're not really nuts. They're, 
I don't know what they are, legumes or something, but they're not they, real. You, they're not real nuts. Isn't that always the case? Your favorite nuts are always the ones not to eat. I suppose yeah, they're, it's because they're the sweetest. They've yeah. got the most carbs. I suppose pistachio is also not good. Uh, I'm actually not sure about that one. Yeah, yeah, it's not the one that we normally prescribe, but it might well be fine. I'm not yeah. sure. So just on the collie rice thing, I was I was curious and I wanted yeah. to ask you. Um, is it so? Even brown rice, because again, on 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 my previous regime, yeah. I was told ignore yellow rice, uh, the red rice, the the white rice, obviously, but yeah. go with brown rice because brown rice is, is is good, not good. It it falls into the same as brown bread, low GI bread, any kind of bread. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, don't you, have you it. would have been on the low GI theory, yeah. uh, which is that it's not the carbs that are such a problem as it's this if they're rapidly digested, mm. and therefore the brown rice is slightly better. We're on the, the total carbohydrate load, and, yeah. and that's the key. So, so rice is just, just adds to the carbohydrate load. Even what color, it doesn't really matter. It's just too much carbohydrate. Well, there we go. Collie rice. That's the new thing, Johnny. Collie rice. Stock, stock yeah. up on collie rice. Sally's done that, as, done that for me as well, Darren. Fantastic. Beautiful. Good Thank you. I look, I look forward to seeing it working someday. <laughs> what are you talking about, Darren? Look at me, bro. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're looking stunning, John. Don't oh, let Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get to you. Thanks, Prof. Always good to chat. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Darren. Cheers, Thanks, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we go. Prof Tim <laughs> Noakes joining us again today. Always fascinating to chat to you. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African time. Radio like you've never seen it before. Balls.co.za.